Alan Hart. You're the six million dollar man. Really? T Twenty million specimen man. And you, isn't that right? This is all your bag. So collection. Yeah, it's Where's the minimisation? Where's your minimise? Oh. Okay, it's all right. Yep, thank you. Okay, thank you. Alan Hart, Earth Sciences. Um, the first uh, wordle of the day, I think, apart from the small one you showed this morning, Vince introduced me to these. Um, I'm going to talk about collections, digital strategy, or the development of that strategy. I'm glad to see that in the Wordle, collections and digitization and data and need are there. That's important to have. I think it's worth going back to the science strategy that we have in the museum, just recently put in place by Science Group. Of course, the challenge is the new generation of natural history museums revolutionize our collections and their use and their availability. We do have a vision, the digital NHM. We have strategic goals, that's planned objectives to how we're going to get to this digital NHM and how we're going to approach it. And if I look at this more carefully, we think, you know, what does it actually mean for us? You know, the, the collection of digital strategy really must encompass the infrastructure, which in the, in the science group strategy says we will complete the database of our collections, make this information available in an open digital format on the web. Um, we'll put in place higher digital throughput pipelines to get our collections, our large volumes of data out there, and we'll work with our partners to make uh, collaborative virtual, virtual networks, you know. But the real clincher for us was this, measuring success, this 20 million of our specimens, specimens are available uh, to, the, to the, the outside. And there's a complete anticipation that we would complete the whole thing in 10 years. This is a big target. We all sat back and thought, wow, what does this actually mean for us? In the past, we don't want to be like the Kimberley Diamond Rush, have to get some sort of mineralogy in here somewhere, where the gun fires and everyone rushes off and does their own thing. We are bad at doing this sometimes. We have to look at the dependencies of what's going on around the museum to make sure we have a co coherent approach that infrastructure is in place and we develop, that infrastructure develops to cater for all the needs we've heard about today. And the information's out there. You know, we all know about the digitization strategic proposed by CALMS, the Smithsonian's doing it, the American Museum, Toronto, nearly every library and archive is approaching this, how they're going to do it. And there is this collection, this, this digital maturity model where you measure how good your institution is. And I would say at the moment, we're getting better, but we were at the bottom here. We're quite disorganized in terms of how we're digitizing our collections. We're making do. Some of us are getting our app together. Some people are leaping forward. But in essence, we want to go to that top red triangle there that says we're all working together on this. We know exactly what we're all doing. And all of those dependencies that we all rely on are not hurdled. We, we, we take them on board as we come across them. Nick Paul of the Collections Trust let me use his slide that he gave at the Smithsonian Strategy Day on their digitization. They had a week-long process about how they're going to deliver this, and it's quite an eye-opener for me in that, you know, we tend to do things rather ad hoc. So we'd, um, for us, for collections, for getting our data out there, we want to digitize lots of things but put relatively little effort into description and promotion. But for our public engagement activities, we want to put digitize relatively few things, but put lots of effort in depth, description, and promotion. Um, in the past, these two lines got blurred, which sometimes means that we don't reach our targets because we get way laid, way laid by some of these things. And so what the digital strategy is there to do is to make sure we're all on track, there are clear guidelines and priorities. So to that end, uh, the, it was written. It went to Science Group Planning Conference in 2013, April. And really, there was seven strands, we call it, and in these seven strands, there were 51 recommendations. And I just made a quick summary of some of the salient points of that. In the, the first, the strategy development organization, uh, really in there, we should have a clear strategy. We need to understand what the benefits are to us. We need a program board, importantly, I think, to, to monitor this and find out what's going on around institutions and where it fits in. This keeps us on track, and we need to develop a policy. The digitization of the, and generation of a virtual collection, we need to know what our collection really is, what the sizes are. I'll come back to that in a minute. But then we looked at the, prior, the priorities of how we approach it, um, time link key collections work, and of course we need to undertake simultaneous digitization across the board. If you start from A to B, we'll be here in 250 years. So we need to do it on a, on a very, very um, project-driven approach. Importantly, we enhance our data. We improve our systems. We need to define the core data fields, what standards we're going to use, the templates we need for capture, 
how are we going to clean our existing data, put these in our everyday working practices. Eye collections that Gordon will talk about is crucial to understanding the pitfalls and the needs that we may require. We need a digital asset management system to store this stuff for the future. And of course, we need to make sure that infrastructure is there to back this up. Because if we're going to spend 50 to 60 million, as Vince pointed out this morning, building this, we need to make sure no one can do delete star dot star on it. So content management, um, validation tools, protocols to incorporate non-standard data sets, a lot of information about molecular, molecular um, new types of data, how we incorporate that into that. And really important is this visibility and discovery. This is where Vince comes in. This is where we have in innovative web access from our public engagement colleagues. And, and of course, I think this morning, the open access is really important to how we extract that data and it's used outside. So we're providing a digital home for, for the data that is NHM proprietary. Strategic alliances uh, speaks for itself. Coordinated approach across the museum. Citizen science will play a huge part in this. Uh, we pursue large-scale funding along the way, and we need to build strategic partners, such as the virtual herbaria that someone asked this morning on, on the Twitter feed. Um, and something that's really sometimes not thought about is the resources, and especially our staff. So it's a substantial resource we need to, to do this. We need to preserve these digital assets. Um, with our staff, it's a different, very different way of working. I think it's really important that our expertise and uh, our authority is there on the web. But also, this morning we spoke about the interpretation of this data. When our data is out there, the curators here and the collections managers, the researchers interpret that, but they're also interpreting the data that's been interpreted by people outside. There'll be a flood of this. So that authority needs to be built into our everyday work. And of course, importantly, we'll celebrate our successes. So really, all of these are different projects. And there are lots of interdependencies that sort of Dave taught me a few weeks ago about the, the need for having these interdependencies in terms that, okay, you put stuff out there, but you haven't got any stuff to put out there in the simplistic terms. You're building core data standards, but are those standards really useful for what our audiences want? All these things need to be, be drilled down. So to the essence, um, this went to science group planning. It was thought at the time there wasn't a need for a program board, but one of the things we should do is look at our collections. We have such wide-ranging collections. 80 million specimens is the last figure. Actually, it was 70 million six months ago. So there are some games being played about the number of specimens you have. But, you know, from the forams to the giant squid, flat sheets, the interpretation of our, our archives, single specimens, things in alcohol is enormous. So what we've done is we've put in a spreadsheet, an outline of the collection. It's really opened our eyes to what we have. Basically, we, for the first time, really, I think we have a really good portfolio of our collection and what's there. There's an example at the top, the, the science disciplines and the uh, library and archives as well. And I've just, each one of those is an outline. You can click on there and you get a breakdown of your collection and you can tell exactly how many specimens, how many staff are associated, how many, how many things you need to do to digitize and what are your priorities? Where, where can you get funding, funding to do this? And off the shelf, there you go, that's where we're at the moment, 74 million specimens. Approximately 5 million records represent that 74 million specimens. We have about a million types, 28 million specimens of wet collections, and we have about 1.5 million slides. So the big curatorial challenge, you know, we've talked about doing this, is the significant backlogs. We have an area. We're looking at parts of the collection that may not have been looked at for many years, but there are backlogs. And those will have to be addressed in terms of their conservation needs, and effectively, what we were doing to get our data out there is re-curating re, re the entire collection uh, for the past 260 years. So essentially, we're going to do this. This will be put in table place in September, where we'll look at this more carefully. We'll look at a program board. We'll look at the holistic, the whole fits together. And uh, I think one of the things we need to do, which will come on, is the strategic partnerships. We talk about funding, and I think it's very interesting that the Heritage Lottery Fund, is said, Karasuta said there, that they're now willing to invest in these digital-only projects because getting our data out there is the way that people play around with them and use them in very innovative ways. So that, in 10 minutes, is digital. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Well done. I think we probably could have spent all afternoon on this one, actually, as a topic in itself. Um, 
I, I'm very glad you, you have to do that role. It's one of those jobs that I, I remind myself, and I think my job's complicated, just how hard yours is. So uh, I think we should take some questions, although we're dead on 10 minutes. I just want to make sure, because it is such a big area. Um, yes, please. Um, yes. A, a challenge in data capture and data cleaning, uh, a trade off between numbers of records and how good those records are and how fit they are for purpose. You gave us a, um, a target in terms of numbers, you didn't say anything about fitness for use, what that use might be, and the data quality. Okay, so for our online audience, a question about data quality versus um, targeting purely the numbers and the digitization, where do we stand on that? Yeah, that, that is a question that we've, we've discussed a lot, and actually it's, it's, it's an eye-opening question, not to be a politician and avoid the, the answer. Um, I think the important thing is to realize that we do have data that in a modern world is, could be regarded as useless. Um, of our, many of our collections just have localities that say Devon, uh, Nicaragua. What does it actually mean? I think the real idea for this now is if we get that data out there, there might be someone there who will be able to interpret that data and say, actually, I've looked at this, and it's very similar to so-and-so. So in a way, we're using a broader citizen science view to come back to us, and then we reinterpret that back. So that recuration is really getting potentially 100 million scientists looking at our collections and having an interpretation. I think it's, it's the interesting thing about this um, project here is effectively it's a health index of our collections. So we can look at collections and say, this collection has problems, this collection has problems. We won't digitize this yet because we'll be spending the next six months trying to work out what we're doing. If we're going to meet the 20 million target that is wanted in the next five years, we'll pick out the easy wins and that will help us inform us of how we're going to look at those harder collections. I hope that answers your questions. Okay. 